<laughs> Armed and dangerous, praise God. Some of us a little crazy and dangerous, but praise God too. Because we're crazy for Jesus. <clears throat> this is the night the Lord's made, and we're going to rejoice or repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we are at a, such a time right now. Things are happening. I mean, things are really happening. Quickly. Globally. And there are things that we have talked about multiple times, and, and there's times when we will repeat the things that were talked about, but from a different fashion, a different perspective, and a different definition of understanding. If you recall... <clears throat> we had talked about um, the area of decisions being unauthorized or whether they're authorized or not, which labels everything that you and I choose to do, whether that acknowledgement in our mind and a mindset, what things need to get burned in our memory. And that area to whatever we're getting ready to do, whether it's been authorized, in other words, approved or unauthorized, disapproved. And this is where a lot of battle is going on also. <clears throat> Again, the enemy's not stupid, but we should be able to outwit him. Amen. In the book of Revelation in chapter 12, And when you and I were born, we were born blind. We were born with scales. I want to reiterate the area to where the word says that the helper, the Holy Spirit, would be sent to those who follow Christ. And those wanting part two. Part one is salvation. Part two is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something begins to happen. The scales come off the eyes. There's a different understanding. The heart is changed. The presence of the, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty takes residence in your spirit. There's a union between your spirit and the Holy Spirit. The process then begins of converting the soul so that the soul begins to cooperate. And while it is not cooperating, the spirit is strong enough by the anointing of the Holy Spirit to say no to the soul. Does everybody get it? And when the flesh wants to speak, it says no to the flesh. But if that union isn't there, that communion isn't there, the no is not there. I will tell you that after my visitation from the Lord, I did not know the word of God, <clears throat> but I met God. I didn't want to read the word of God because I saw so many people carry Bibles and were hypocrites. They could quote scriptures, but they didn't know him. There was not that relationship with him. And every time the Lord tried to bring me the Bible, I'd say, no. I don't want to know it. I want to know you. You can speak to me. I'll do whatever you want. Just tell me what you want. <clears throat> and he convinced me that I needed to know the word. <laughs> <clears throat> but prior to reading the word of God, my spirit man was so filled. I was so filled with the spirit of God that the Holy Spirit would be as loud as I'm speaking to you right now. That voice in me was no longer my voice. It was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Not to be arrogant or prideful, but the character of Jesus was so strong in me because I was so filled with the Spirit of God that I thought, felt, and sensed being like Jesus, but not being God. Does everybody understand that? And after a period of months and a year, that began to lift as the Lord began to replace some of that area with his word. <clears throat> but prior to that, every time that my soulish emotion would begin to try to come up, it would be a no 
by my spirit, man, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. No, it would reject it immediately. Every time my flesh would come up in the area of self or loss or whatever or desire, no. So the Holy Spirit kept me connected the whole time. <clears throat> and the whole time, that's all I wanted to do was stay in God's presence. I didn't want to leave his presence. Because his presence was so strong and so real, and I didn't want to walk away from the reality of his presence and who he was and who I am in him. <clears throat> and that's when I used to call the Holy Spirit buddy because he was my buddy, man. They called him helper in the word, but he was my buddy because he was real to me. And so I named him buddy. But in this, without... The guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says he would be called a helper. Of course, it doesn't say buddy in the Bible. <clears throat> but you can call him, one, you know, buddy if you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it said that he would guide us to all truth. And he would tell us things to come. Those are two vitally important revelations that need to be established in us. Because if you're not... Being, if you don't know what's getting ready to happen and you're not being led by the truth and something's not right, that connection between your spirit man and the Holy Spirit is in union. It's not united. There's a distance. There's something going on. Either there's sin or something has happened where there's a separation. I'm not going to say disconnect. There's just a separation. But if it continues, there can fall into a disconnect. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Hallelujah. So in this right now, there are things that are happening where God is invading every area. When Jesus stepped into the temple, the first thing he did was kick over tables. Well, he actually built, a, he took a whip. Talk about somebody coming in the temple with a whip. It probably freaked everybody out. I don't know if he whipped it or not, you know. But I know that he kicked over the tables and all the money changers, and he exposed their wickedness because he said, this is my father's house. It's not a house of thieves or a den of thieves. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of my presence. And he kicked them all out. And that what begins to happen when you and I get saved. There's a process of kick out. So that the Holy Spirit has possession of every chamber and every member of your temple. Every area. And that process <clears throat> is a process. It's great if it can happen overnight, but praise God. <clears throat> We may get filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit and feel wonderful and everything, but you ain't done yet. <laughs> that process is there. And if the conversion doesn't continue, if the leading and the union of the Spirit doesn't continue, there will become a drift. And the first thing will begin to happen, you will begin to agree and touch with things that are unclean. And they may not be unclean to you but they'd be unclean to God. Amen? Amen? So in this, we have entered a, I don't want to say a new season, even though it's kind of, it's a new era right now. We've entered a new age in that, in that area of age, in that time span right now, that not only has the first whirlwind come through and peeled back and exposing everything, just like when Jesus kicked over the, tables in the temple, but there is going to be, and there is a beginning of release of provision, of armory, of weapons, of strategies, of financial support, of the anointing. All of these things are going to begin to fall, and, and they're, they're like trickling in areas, but eventually it's going to come strong. <clears throat> Again, the first world win was to peel back. It's not over with. The peeling will continue. 
It's like opening up a sardine can, you know. It really begins to stink. And, and so in that, this peeling will continue, but in the, and during that peeling, there will be trinklings of provision, there will be trinklings of new weapons, new strategies, more revelations, visitations, all kinds of other things, and God will recycle again the area of the upper room. And many, just look what he said in the book of Joel, that in the latter days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and my sons and daughters will prophesy. They will see dreams and visions and so forth. And there will be a stronger anointing. The gifts of the spirit will increase. Healings will increase. But in the meantime, until that fullness is released, because that will be the union of the earlier and the latter reign. In the meantime, we must endure, stay connected Maintain assembling, staying filled, keep your spirit man strong, stay filled with the spirit of God, decree, quote, and so. Amen? In the book of Revelation in chapter 12 and verse 7, it says, And war broke out in heavens, in the heavens. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail, nor was their place found for them in heaven any longer. This is God's, uh, in his presence. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Hello. That war is still going on. It has not stopped. It is a spiritual war. What a physical manifestation. It has been going on since the time of man's creation. Adam, or not Adam, Lucifer fell before Adam was created. I believe God created Adam in his image and likeness to start a race that would combat against the Luciferians in this realm. But one of the things that happened in the garden was Lucifer, as the serpent, deceived Eve. Eve deceived Adam. And what occurred was blindness. They no longer could see the Lord no more, no longer could see the serpent anymore. But they used to be able to see the angels. They saw it all. In fact, the fallen angels were servants of Adam. They had to serve him. Even Lucifer had to serve him. That's why he did all, everything he could to deceive him and take his position. The advantage of taking position and in military operations is to be unseen. So everybody got it. He accomplished that in the garden. But God wasn't done. He had a plan. God always has a plan. And so I want you to understand that this war, this whole arena that is going on, and when you and I were born, we were born blind. We were born with scales. The word talks about the veils. But I want to specifically mention the veil. I want to specifically talk about the veil and what's going on today. It is called, I want to name this veil. It's called the veil of Lucifer. It's the veil of Lucifer. So that we just don't call this a blinded veil or by the God of this world. It's the veil of Lucifer. Does everybody get it? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So he wins battles by pe keeping people veiled. That's how he wins battles. What he does is he deceives individuals 
to veil them. Then he puts them in a state of fear to enslave them. And verse 1, let's speak it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was what? Not pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idler, idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by what? Serpents. I want you to grab hold of them. People don't realize that disobedience and rebellion tempts God. Why? Because it causes God to move against you. And I want you to see this. It says, and we're destroyed by what? Serpents. Serpents represent demons. And serpents bite. And when they bite an individual, their venom is in them. It plants a corruptible seed. And then it begins to hatch. And a person becomes more and more enticed for lust or whatever it's been bit by. I don't know if I've ever seen any uh, individuals that uh, have fought in demonic forces while they're sleeping or whatever, and you can see teeth marks on them because they were bitten. I remember going into a hospital to pray for a woman. And when I went into a hospital, <clears throat> the, woman show, the Lord showed me immediately witchcraft. And there was a woman in there that was her friend who was a witch. And the Lord opened my eyes in the spirit realm and I saw this woman standing there all of a sudden turned to a cup of serpents. It was a cup, a tall cup, and these serpents were, there was 15, 20 of them, I don't know, out of this cup. And when she went to go touch the woman that was in the hospital bed, she would go, oh. And I wanted to say something, the Lord said, be quiet. He said, I want you to stand at the end of her bed and fold your arms. So I stood at the end of the bed and I folded my arms. And I watched. And every time this woman touched this woman that was in the bed, she would moan. And the Lord opened my eyes. And every time that woman touched this woman, I saw a serpent come and bite her every time. And every time she got bit, she groaned and moaned. And I thought, wow, this is phenomenal. And people don't realize that they get bit. Sin, open doors, an agreement, a false agreement with a spirit, a voice of the stranger will cause you to get bit. Hello? Amen. Verse 9 again. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by what? Serpents. How did they get destroyed? They were bit. Nor complain as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by the what? Destroyer. So I want you to see something in here which is powerful. It says sexual immorality destroyed them. Tempting Christ destroyed them. And complaining destroyed them. That will bring revelation. Verse 11. Now all these things happen to them as what? Examples. And they were written for our admonishing, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he what? Falls. No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. 
But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, how are you going to escape if you can't hear? How are you going to escape if you're not united with your spirit, with the Holy Spirit? That's where it says we are joined in one spirit with Christ. You won't make the escape. He who thinks that he stands will fall. Many believe that they've made it. Or they're safe. They're okay. And they're comfortable. They're a dangerous position. This is called lukewarm and dangerous. Amen? Amen. Revelation 3. Oh, happy day. Revelation 3, verse 14. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? I, I want you to know that I can, I can sense very, very strongly very strongly, the importance of grabbing hold of what's happening. Very strongly. I can almost rip out of my flesh right now. If I wasn't holding on to this pulpit, I'd probably be flying around. <laughs> Just a strong impression by the Spirit of God. It's saying we, things are so about to happen that there's going to be a veil that is going to be ripped to expose so much darkness that you and I must be ready and must get the veil and make sure that the veil of Lucifer is not only off of us, but assist the move of God that is coming to remove the veil of Lucifer off of others. <clears throat> In verse 14, And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are what? Lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are what? You are wretched. You are miserable. You are poor. You are blind, and you are naked. <laughs> now I want to go over that for a second, because lukewarm is associated with being wretched, miserable, poor in spirit, blind to the spiritual things, spiritual truth. See, the psychics are open to the spirit realm, but they're blinded to the spiritual truth. So to be long, lukewarm is to be wretched. That means that person is miserable. Amen? Amen? They are poor in spirit. They're blind to the spiritual truth. And they are naked. In other words, they are uncovered. That means they're unprotected. They're unprotected. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 18, here's the request. I counsel you to buy from me. How do you buy from God? You minister to him. That's how you buy from him. You minister to him through praise and worship. Worship is ministering to him. Praise is for you battling yourself so you can dismantle yourself, self, and all carnality so you can enter his presence and then minister to him and worship him. That's how you buy from the Lord. Amen? That is the price. Money is called worship in the spirit. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your what? Eyes with eye salve that you may see. Vitally important. That is the main thing. He said, okay, get connected to me and anoint your eyes. How do you anoint your eyes? You gaze on him. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous and do what? 
Repent. Be zealous and repent. Zealous means hot. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. There is that union. And he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Vitally important. Again, lukewarm is associated with wretched, miserable, poor in spirit, blinded to spiritual truth, naked, uncovered, unprotected. He requires us to bind refined gold in the fire. In other words, get in the fire. Why? Fire burns out, doesn't it? Get connected. Burn out through the soulish, the lust. Burn it off. And burn off the blinding scales known the veil, known as the veil of Lucifer. Why? So can people can become awakened out of the slumber and become zealous, repentful, and to see and to hear and to obey and to follow and to follow with purpose. Is everybody okay? Second Corinthians four, the veil of Lucifer. In verse 1, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Get connected. Get connected. Get connected. And stay connected. Stay filled. Stay filled. Stay filled. Make sure your spirit man is connected and unified with the spirit. Make sure your, your soul is not taking dominion. Make sure your flesh is not taking dominion. In other words, self-examine yourself. Always self-examine every decision in every area. Make sure everything you're doing is qualified, approved, and authorized by the Spirit of God. Verse 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel is veiled, which is the message of truth, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. And what veil is this? It is the veil of Lucifer. Whose mind's the God of this age. Again, who's the God of this age? Lucifer. Has blinded who do not believe. They don't follow. Again, they don't follow. They may call themselves believers, but they don't follow because they're veiled by Lucifer. Lest the what? The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Christ in the face of the Lord, glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The God of this age is Lucifer, or what we call Satan. He's the ruler of the earth. And his demons and fallen angels, his hybrids, his shapeshifters, his humans that are veiled by Lucifer. Oh, you're going to find a lot of things that you don't, you don't know. You're going to find a lot of things that you... How many of y'all know that the Bible can't hold it all? That's why we have the Holy Spirit. Because he takes you beyond. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, you got to understand something vitally important. There are many humans that are veiled by Lucifer. Amen? The Bible even talks about him coming as an angel of light. That's shape-shifting. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. They call him a serpent, calls him a dragon. Hello? He comes in many forms. That's called shape-shifting. Second Corinthians 11. 
Even the word says that we never know who we're entertaining, right? <laughs> Verse 12. Let's speak it. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity of those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are what? False prophets, deceitful workers, transforming, everyone transform, themselves into the apostles of Christ. In other words, they shift. They can change themselves. And no wonder for Satan himself is the top leading transformer shapeshifter. <laughs> himself into an angel of what? Light. He changes. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also are transformers. <laughs> Transform themselves into what? Ministers of righteousness. Whose end will be according to their works. See, many people do not even know who's behind the pulpit. They don't even know. There are many false, righteous ministers out there. Does everybody understand that? They are ministers of righteousness, but they don't live a righteous life. They may be proclaiming righteousness, but they're not righteous. They can't practice it. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their what? Their work. False prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen? They are veiled by Lucifer. And John 9. John chapter 9. See, the battle right now, we've got a battle against righteousness and wickedness. Amen. Amen. And we have a battle of those that are saying things that are good, but they're actually evil. And the word says that in the latter days that they would say those things that are called evil. Amen. They will call good evil and evil good. We are in those days. And in John 9, 13, <clears throat> it says they brought, G brought this man who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked this man again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I could see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others say, how can a man who is a sinner do such thing, do such signs? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him because he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received the sight until they called the parents of him who had received the sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then do, does he now see? And his parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. By what means he now sees we do not know, or, how, or who opened his eyes we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents <laughs> said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the club. No longer would they have free membership. <clears throat> the synagogue. Amen. Verse 23. 
Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and asked him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. <clears throat> then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I love it. Man, this dude, God was using this dude, slapping these dudes around, man. <laughs> then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses as far, for this fellow. We do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why, this is marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. <laughs> Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he what? He hears them. Since the world began, he has been unheard of that. It has been unheard that anyone would open the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins and you are teaching us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to, with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into, the, into this world that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees were, who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. Powerful. I mean, Jesus just knew how to just tear these dudes up, man. <laughs> in other words <coughs> those that at one time did see but they became blind and they became blind by the they were veiled by Lucifer and they promote doctrines of demons which also is a, an area where there's a mix of truth and a mix of falsehood that's called a doctrine of demon it's mixed <clears throat> to say that they could see but again, they follow sin, and they are blind. What occurred with them is they became prideful because they had knowledge. They were actually given this knowledge by God. But this knowledge so took them over that they were blinded to the one that brought it to them. Amen? Because pride will blind Amen. And Luke 4. <clears throat> the veil, veiled by Lucifer. The veil of Lucifer. And verse 18. <clears throat> the spirit of the Lord is called the anointing. Amen. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me. To do what? To preach the gospel, the message of truth to those who are poor in spirit. He has sent me to what? Heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and to recover the sight to those who've been taken and are blinded. To set freedom, to set those, those who are, what, oppressed by the devil. 
and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or to grant redemption. The anointing, the presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is upon us to preach to the poor in spirit, to heal the emotionally broken, to set free those in bondage, to remove the veil of blindness, to free the oppressed and that are demonized, and to proclaim salvation to those willing to repent and turn from the world. That's what the anointing is about. Remember, in this whole area, Jesus came to bring sight. You, without sight, you can't use the sword. Amen? Without sight, it's impossible. Spiritual sight. You can be physically blind and still see spiritually. 2 Timothy 2. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In verse 21. Therefore, anyone cleanses himself from the latter. How do you cleanse yourself? You repent. You turn away. You walk away. He will be a vessel of honor. So when you get cleansed and you walk away from the ways of the world and sin, then you step into another arena and that's God's arena. And you become sanctified because now you're joined with him and you're separated from the world. That's what sanctification is. Therefore, if anyone walks away, cleanses himself from the latter, walks away from evil, <clears throat> repents, he'll be washed by the blood, cleansed. he become a vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts. Why? Because these areas he's going to explain is what will bring the veil of Lucifer back. Lust. But pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who what? Call out on the Lord on a pure heart. But avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses. That means be awakened. When a person comes to their senses, they are awakened. Other than that, what the enemy does is try to put people to sleep. How does he put people to sleep? By veiling them. And escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to do his will. So those who are veiled by Lucifer are asleep. Amen? And they are now doing the will of the devil. They are doing the will of the devil, even though they may be Christians. They still believe that they are. They may go to church and everything else but they still may be veiled or the veil has come back on. Now they're veiled by Lucifer. They can quote scripture. Lucifer quotes scripture. So do demons. Oh, they can proclaim it. They speak it and whatever, but they touch things that are unclean and they do not like to get in God's presence, but they like to tell everybody about Jesus. That's called familiar spirits. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are under the control of Lucifer. <clears throat> Again, you must be awakened to escape or you stay in bondage. You stay in that state of being. This is a global effort by God Almighty who is infiltrating and awakening globally. That's why it's called the Great Awakening. This is the global Great Awakening with an agenda of Christ. Not the agenda of Lucifer, because all of his people are under his control and are veiled. God is infiltrating right now in this great awakening. It's called an awakening. Why? Because you can't be awakened unless the veil is removed. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3.
verse 3. Or, I'm sorry, did I say verse 3? Verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, but know this, that what? And in the last days, perilous times will come. Why would perilous times come? Because more people would be veiled. And there would be more division, more battles in the physical realm, but they're influenced by the what? Spiritual realm. So the more that Lucifer, Satan's kingdom, can veil people, the more that they can use in this realm. <clears throat> For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, denying the anointing. And from such people do what? Turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, and led away with various lusts. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth which sets them free. Now Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. Why? Because they're veiled by Lucifer. But they will progress no further. For their folly will manifest to all as theirs also was. Remember, the word says that darkness cannot comprehend light. They will fight for their agenda because they truly believe that it is the truth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith. Long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch, uh, Ikeum, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord, what? Delivered. Delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will what? Grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. They will continue to deceive because they are veiled and to be used. Remember, you are veiled by deception. Deception is what veils a person. So once a person is deceived, if the truth is not replaced with that deception, that person stays veiled. <clears throat> but you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> is everybody okay? Again, this is an area where people are veiled by Lucifer. They become compromisers, uh, gullible, have a form of godliness, but not the anointing. They are carriers. <clears throat> they are carriers of evil and, and, and the presence of evil. They are carriers of destruction. They carry various lustful spirits. They are, they are sleepwalking. They are what? Sleepwalking. They're sleepwalking in a false reality. They're not unplugged from Satan's kingdom. Nor are they awakened yet to real truth. They live a life of reflection and projection. They live a life of reflection and projection. They reflect. They're reflecting the true answer of truth. In other words, they reflect everything. They try to avoid it all. They're not even realizing it. And they're projecting their own twisted interpretation of lies that they call truth. They love to twist the word of God for their benefit, but they can't live it. Amen? <clears throat> they do, they're not connected to the true plane of reality. They live in a false reality. And that's exactly what the veil of Lucifer does to individuals. They will die for what they believe in even though it's not truth, because they're not free. 
2 Timothy 4. Let's speak it together. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. It's happening now. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Make sure you become watchful in all things. That's alert. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. In other words, these itching ears of deception with blinded eyes of delusion. Again, these are itching ears of deception and blinded eyes of delusion, veiled by Lucifer. Itching ears of deception with blinded eyes of delusion, veiled by Lucifer. 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> Verse 33. Is everybody okay? First Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be what? Why? Because if you get deceived, what happens? You get veiled. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake! Woohoo! Awake to what? Righteousness. And do not what? Sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised? And with what body do they come, foolish one? What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and each seed is its own body. Now, <clears throat> in this, we are to wake in the area to remove the scales of Lucifer. In other words, sin brings a scale. Deception brings a scale. Amen? Sin is a promoter of the presence of evil. When you are connected again and the veil is removed, righteousness will produce. Every time. Ephesians 5. Oh, happy day. Verse 8, Ephesians 5, verse 8, For you were once darkness, you were once veiled. But now you are light, and the Lord walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Why? Because if you don't expose them, what's going to happen? It will take you. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says what? Awake! Awake! In other words, remove the veil. Repent. Remove the veil. Awake you who sleep. Again, there are people who are still drowsy. They're not completely asleep, but they're half asleep. Do you ever talk to someone who's half asleep? They just woke up. <laughs> Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with the things of the world and with wine. 
in which dissipation, but be filled with the what? Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians five. So we see here that we are being awakened from deceptions or deceptive sleep. Arise from the journey to hell. <laughs> Amen. So he says, awake you who are dead. Why? Because that is a journey to hell. Christ will give you sight. And remove the veil of Lucifer with his power, presence, and truth of his word and anointing. The uprising is a global uprising. It's an awakening uprising <clears throat> that the people have attached to the truth and with understanding of the veil, evil influence. <clears throat> These evil influences have infiltrated their governments, their educations, and the media. They know it. They're awakening to these things. Once everybody is awakened, it's over. Think about that. <laughs> Once everyone is awakened, it's over. But there is going to be a number of awake, those who are awakened before Jesus comes. He knows the number that will be awakened that he's going to remove. So that's why this great awakening is happening right now. And it will continue until, and it will increase and increase and increase until the Lord comes and takes out of here who are the restrainers. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. <clears throat> Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the what? <clears throat> Flesh. Even though we have known Christ, According to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in Christ, meaning you see the way he sees. You hear, you walk like him, you think like him, you talk like him. Your character is like him. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Amen. But you reconnect always back to his character all the time. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. <clears throat> Again, God is pleading through us who were once veiled but now are unveiled to rescue those who have been veiled so that they may be awakened out of sleep and of deception and be awakened into the glorious kingdom of Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to understand something that <clears throat> in this battle that is going on, it's almost like a chess game. And God is moving his people, moving parts. There's no coincidence in what's going on right now. There's no coincidence that we have a president called Trump associated with the last Trump. Amen? The last, tr the Feast of Trumpets. There's no coincidence of this uprising. There's no coincidence of the rising up against this president that you've never seen before in your life. There's no coincidence. The media has been veiled for generations. It was called the Mockingbird. 
It was associated with uh, law enforcement and so forth, so that they can use the media. I mean, the greatest way to get information out to people is the media. So you have internet, you have all kinds, you have newspaper, you have magazines, you have education, and all of these things. <clears throat> and they monitor these things. They allow things to come and go and so forth. But there is a, a system, and God is utilizing right now, and in, in this system that he's using right now is to communicate. It is to communicate with all. It is a group of righteous, God-fearing men and women that is associated in our government with Donald Trump. That is communing, communicating globally. And they're using this communication system. And this communication system that people are awakening to is called Q. In this arena, Q. Q is a representation of, <clears throat> uh, in Star Trek, there was a character that was called Q. And Q was almost like a god, but he wasn't god. He created things. He could do all kinds of things. He can appear, disappear. But he knew all information. He was very knowledgeable. But he wasn't god. But he was always accountable to a council over him. Q was established months after President Trump became president. It was a backdoor communication that would reach the globe. Because the main street media will not tell you what's really going on. So people have to search the internet and so forth. You can Google Q. There are, and he speaks in interpretations where they're coded and decoded, but he explains a lot of things. And there are individuals that interpret it. They're called Qons. But these are righteous believers. Q quotes scripture, everything. Now, I haven't talked about this at all, but it's time because eventually the news media will not ask the president who is Q. They won't because then it would be exposed. And they would be exposed. But again, these are God-fearing people that have established this. They tell you things to come, just like the Holy Spirit. They communicate in information, and dates, everything. There are individuals that interpret all the codes and what's going on. You can go to a website called Brain Medic. He's one of them. There's multiples of these individuals. But this communication system is to reach the world globally. In Paris, I don't know if you heard about the uprisings. There's uprisings in Iran. There's uprisings in Paris. There's uprisings in Germany. Every country, every nation, and every continent, and every island is uprising against the evil wickedness that they're finally beginning to see and understand. And these people, they had, they're, these people, individuals that are uprising. I don't know if you heard about the uprising in Paris where the, I mean, you know, these guys are stealing elections. Same thing. Listen, Obama didn't win the election. He stole it. All of these areas. They're globalists or one world order and they're under the veil of Lucifer. This fight is continuing. You're going to see more and more of this fight. You will hear about Q eventually. But like I said, you can Google and begin to learn the information. That is the system behind closed doors. It's a communication to avoid the mainstream media. And Trump uses this to communicate. And in this, there was, in Paris, in these uprisings, they have to put, they have to carry yellow jackets or safety things, jackets, vests in their trunks. So if they choose to protest, they must wear this vest. Or they could be shot or whatever. So these people had all of these vests on. In fact, as they began to protest, the police officer took their helmets off because they agreed with them. And on many of their vests in the back, they had Q. There was an email of a, 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 po a poster of a guy who was in the South Pole. <laughs> he was holding up a Q sign. 
Why? It's not the glorified Q, it's the glorified God getting the information to people. This is what is happening right now. And I want to tell you about it so that you are prepared for what's happening because they're trying to discredit Q connected to the president. Many people don't notice it, but many times President Bush, or President Bush, President, President Trump gives the Q sign at the service. At every, when he speaks, he'll give the Q sign or point to a Q. Or he'll speak something and uh, somebody will request something to make it known real. But again, this is a high intelligence operation that is a communicating system to overcome evil that God is using these men quoting scriptures to communicate with mankind in a global arena to uprise. You've heard of many things and murders and so forth. They are killing people left and right and trying to distract and try to discredit everything that Trump is trying to do. But they will all be arrested at some time. Something will come up. Why? Because this is a battle of justice and righteousness over wickedness and evil. And we must pray on this also. We must pray for protection for our president and especially the military. Right now, they're cleaning out all the FBI and so forth. When you begin to search out certain things of what's going on, there have already been executions because to a traitors and treason is execution. It's already happened. Guantanamo Bay has already been built up. They've already spent millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. They have already sent troops there. Many people will be sent there that are involved in treason, child smuggling, and so forth. It will happen, and it is coming. Why? Because they are veiled by Lucifer. They're under the deception and the agenda of a Luciferian kingdom. And they are evil and they are wicked. And they lie. They don't know the truth and they can't tell the truth because they're under the father of lies. This is happening right now. You are hearing this. You are being prepared because things will begin to uprise. Other countries are going to be falling into martial law. If this country falls into martial law, it's not because of anything bad. It's because of something good. It's just to protect the people. As the righteous law enforcement goes out and gets the other ones. Does everybody get it? Again, we are on the cutting edge right now. It is phenomenal what's happening. It's overwhelming what's going on globally. There are so many things that is happening. I could spend days here talking about it. But anyways, I'm only allowed to release so much. So I want you to know what's going on so that we can be prepared and ready, stay filled, stay dressed, and stay possessed with the Spirit of God. And don't get pushed out of position. Don't be anxious. And don't let the enemy deceive you, especially emotionally. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed for your word and your truth. We thank you for what's going on and what's getting ready to happen. And we ask, Lord, that you'll give us the discernment and wisdom, knowledge and understanding to maintain an area of sight, to maintain an area of hearing, and to maintain a pure heart that is pleasing to you. Lord, we commit this whole time this evening to you. We thank you. And we ask, Lord, that you'll protect everything that's been revealed to us, that we may see the truth all the way through and expose evil in every area and walk in truth, power, and strength connected in unity of your spirit for your name, for your glory, and for your honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.